We are live. What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Surf Tip Saturday, number five, where you put your questions in the comments below and we answer them in the following week's video. So we're going to get started. Actually, uh, a couple announcements. We obviously did our trip to the Caribbean side. We just got the video up of our whole weekend. Really cool video. Got to see, uh, get to kind of travel on with us as we tell the story of uh, traveling and um, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was cool a cool video. trip. Definitely check it out. Uh, also, <clears throat> coming up soon, you know, on top of all the surf tips and everything, we are going to get some custom surfboards. Kind of worked out a surfboard sponsor. Gonna yep. get some, some boards at cost for After the kids. After this video, we're going with the whole team. We're gonna film it so you guys can check out our how we pick some boards and that kind of stuff. How we work with the shaper to get an awesome custom board. So, anyhow, let's get started. So, first question from Benjamin Cavanaugh. What can happen if you don't fix stings on a surfboard? What can happen? Who, you want to take this or sure. should I take it? You go ahead and take it. So what happens if you cut yourself and you don't take care of it? It gets infected. So if you have a surfboard and it gets a ding in it and it starts taking in water, it's going to get infected just like a cut, a scrape, or anything else that we don't take care of. Basically when you have a, a puncture or a ding in your surfboard that uh, allows the fiberglass to open up, it's going to start sucking in water. The, fo the, the boards are made of foam and it starts sucking in water. That water is going to rot the foam inside and it's going to weaken your surfboard and basically it's, it's bad. We don't want the surfboard to take on water. It's going to get heavier. Um, it's going to delaminate so the gonna, resin is going to separate from the foam. And then you'll, so it basically yeah, weakens the board. No I mean, you can have a board that's 15 years old and as long as you keep it watertight and fix a ding as soon as it happens uh, before it takes on water, uh, you can keep a board for a very, very long time. Uh, when we start letting it take on water, uh, the foam starts rotting. Not going to be good for your surfboard. Um, Make sure you dry them out before you yeah. fix them. You don't want to fix it over a wet foam. Yeah, if you if you don't fix your surfboard, uh, or I'm sorry, if you do fix your surfboard and it's wet inside, it, that's the, the moisture will cause it to delaminate as well. Uh, really, really bad for your surfboard, really weakens the board. So yep. always fix your dings. Good idea to check. I mean, even every couple of weeks, if you're surfing a lot, <clears throat> you scrape the, the wax off your board, check your board, nose to tail, make sure you don't have any uh, dings that are taking on water. And uh, if you, get a if you lot see more something that looks like a ding, might sound kind of weird, but you can suck on it. And if salt water comes out of the ding, out of the little crack or something, then you know that it needs to be repaired. Sometimes you can't really tell that it's a ding. Sometimes you get a little hairline fracture and the water gets in. So, anyways, cool. next question. All right, this one's for you since you've dealt with this from okay. Gabrielle Penis. What are some good warm up techniques and exercise to prevent injuries? And you mentioned that you had some tendonitis from paddling the pop up. So, you dealt with that a little bit. So, okay, so you, you, you stated that you're 31 years old, so you might be thinking it has something to do with your age. And I would say probably not. It's just that I, when I, I had actually a tendonitis problem when I was like in my early 20s. And this went on for like three or four months because I never actually got it healed. So it would kind of go away and then I would try to surf or I would try to work out and then it would flare up again and it just kept coming back and coming back and I had the same kind of thing where I could maybe go surfing and then 15-20 minutes later my elbows, arms were aching. And I'm willing to bet that what's probably agitating it is obviously a little bit of the paddling but it's probably when you're going through the waves or either turtle rolling or duck diving and you're kind of going like this with the surfboard. I would say that you've got to take care of the tendonitis. That really has nothing to do with warming up. If you have tendonitis, warming up's not gonna fix it. You have to rest it, ice it. The way I fixed my tendonitis is I basically just stopped all physical activity for a couple weeks, three weeks, and I iced it every day. And then I kind of cleaned up my diet because somebody told me that there's a lot of inflammatory foods that can actually make tendonitis just prolong. So I kind of cut out a lot of things like sugar, uh, you know, junk food, um, dairy, and tried to eat really clean. And I iced my elbows every day, like two or three times a day, and I massaged it really hard. I got in there and somebody told me, you know, you get a circulation, but I did not do any strain. And after about three weeks, the tendonitis went away and never came back. But before that, it was like three or four months of it just coming back and back and back. As far as warm-up goes, if you don't have any injuries that you're dealing with, any type of warm-up that gets your heart rate going, you know, six, seven minutes. If you're going to be using surfing, you want to warm up both upper body, lower body, so you can do a little bit of jogging, and, you know, your typical jumping jacks, things like that. And then after you're warm, then you do your stretches. So a lot of people, they do it backwards. They stretch first. You always want to stretch after your body is warm. 
lubricate the muscles. Anyways, the lactic acid, so. cool. Next question. All right, this one's gonna be for Atua. So this question has been asked by quite a few people. Uh, but what are some good tricks for beginners on shortboards? And I think the, the way the questions were asked most time is like, what are some fun things you can do on a shortboard instead of just trying to, to ride down the line or, or work on fundamentals? So we're not talking yeah, about so. fundamentals, but just fun things you can do on the surfboard. So, Atua, take it away. Now you, you, can, you can practice like switch dancing. Like if you're going regular, you can like jump into Luffy, the 180. You could, you could try taking your fins off and do 360s. That is super fun. <laughs> so no, no, fins. no fin surfing, super fun. Yeah. Um, there, you can try practicing floaters where, you go, where you're going down the line and you like get on on the white water or right, right, right as it breaks and you ride it and you get down, that's, that's very basic. Floaters are probably one of the first tricks that beginners can usually pick up. Easy, you know. And on top of that, anything else? Just, you know, really like if you're, especially if you're new on a shortboard, I guess, getting used to how the board moves like you know just just trying you know putting the board on rail pushing the tail hard you know trying to push your turns and again we're not talking about like practicing fundamentals but just you know getting used spraying to board, that's a fun trick know? to do is just see how, how much spray you can make even if it actually kind of makes you fall you can still kind of just if you're going or see how much spray you can do on the bottom turn or whatever that helps you kind of know what you can and can't do and helps you kind of push the envelope so that yeah. as, as you get better. I think whenever I get a new board, I like to just see how hard I can push on it. You know, I kind of play around with it and see, you know, how, what the board can handle, like how hard I can push to a turn or what the limits of the board are. And uh, definitely fun to try. Yeah, you can and just be creative. People. Just be creative. We Watch have a couple, people. we have a couple videos on our channel where Tua does some tricks for kids Yeah. on a longer board where he does stuff like cockroaches and all these different like things, you know, riding on your back, riding upside down, backwards, doing headstands, handstands, things <clears> like that. Um, be creative. All right, what else we got? All right, last question is from Ashley Weaver. What are some tips on transitioning from a long board to a short board? So I guess I'll take that one. This question we get a lot, and actually, I think we may have answered this in the first Q&A or the second Q&A. Possible. But we'll do it again because there's... Well, and here's the thing is I, I surf both. I surf on a 9.0 and sometimes like an, up to a 9.4 longboard, and then my shortboards are under six feet, and I'll ride them both in one day. I'll ride the shortboard in the morning, longboard in the afternoon, whatever. So I transition back and forth a lot. So a couple things to remember that when you're going back and forth between the two boards is that first off, you can't ride them the same. If you try and ride your longboard the same way you ride your shortboard or vice versa, it doesn't work, it looks horrible. So realize that they're two different style of boards and you need to ride them differently. The longboard, um, you know, it's gonna turn slower, we're gonna catch waves easier, we're gonna catch different waves. When I'm longboarding, I'm looking for different waves. I'm looking for slopier waves and I'm looking to catch them earlier, the waves before they build up really steep. Whereas on my shortboard, I wanna catch a steeper wave. So just, you know, just to start off, the, the way I catch waves is completely different in the, the way I approach catching waves. I'm looking for different waves, usually again, like I said, more slopey waves for the longboard, steeper waves for the shortboard. And also how I maneuver them, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I realize that I can't rip through turns the way I do on a shortboard, on a longboard. So when I'm turning my longboard or if I go from longboard to shortboarding, I realize that, you know, I need to, uh, the way I shift my balance. So. On a long board, we can change our stance, like physically move forward and back on the board in order to do different kinds of turns. Uh, when I go from long board and short boarding, I realize that my stance is pretty much set once I'm up, so I'm uh, more shifting my weight than I am shifting my body back and forth. But really, I guess the, the biggest piece of advice I can give you is just have a different mindset when you go from riding one board to the other, because if you, again, if you try and ride them the same, you're not gonna have very much success. So. Well, a couple more tips, and this is what we went over the first time, we'll kind of say it again, is when you're going from a big board down to a short board, it's a good idea to maybe go in increments. Don't just jump from a big board straight down to a tiny little board. You know, try to get some boards in between. And then the second thing is it's a lot harder to catch a wave on a smaller board than it is on a big board, so make sure your fundamentals are sound. We're talking paddling, um, knowing when to catch the wave, positioning, things like that. That'll make the process of getting to a smaller board because the biggest hurdle that people have when they go down to a small board is wave Don't count. Waves, yeah. Their wave count goes down like that. So, All right, guys. Well, we appreciate all the thumbs up, all the questions. Please keep them coming. 
Yeah, the thumbs up should be right over here. Just click it. And be sure to subscribe for uh, all the weekly tips. Got them coming all the time. Lots of great videos. Don't forget, spread shirts. We can throw a link in for your Shaka gear if you yeah. guys want to get on this. So, guys, I guess we'll see you. Until it in, next uh, week or the next video, which, well, tomorrow or the next day. We'll see you. Keep them coming at you. Pura vida. Aloha.